So I'm delighted to welcome Angie Leather, who's a transplant uh, coordinator, clinical nurse specialist working at the Christie Hospital in Manchester. And An Angie's going to be presenting on the topic of genital GVHD at this year's EBMT virtual meeting. Angie, it would be great to hear a bit more about the work that you do. Uh, you've worked as the Transplant Coordinator CNS for a number of years now. How's the role changed during the time that you've been doing it? Um, it's got an awful lot busier. Um, yeah, it's just changed in the fact that um, differences with um, cell doses and cells, you know, obviously whatever's in vogue at the moment comes through EBMT. So we've had cord transplants, we've had haplotransplants, now we've got the CAR T. So everything just all sort of like comes back to the transplant coordinator, um, at least in our department, really. But, you know, quite exciting. It's, you know, challenges and things are all coming up coming about all the time. And if you could go right back to the beginning, Angie, is there anything that you change about the time that you've spent in this particular role? No, I'd like to have sort of like had the knowledge that I've got now, you know, from the very beginning, because it's a big learning curve and, you know, coming from the ward into a into a CNS post and into a, you know, specialist post, it's really quite difficult. And I remember those times and it was, you know, it was quite tough. The fact that, um, you know, we were just sort of like learning on our feet and we still are learning on our feet and, you know, things change every day. So, yeah, um, I'm not sure that I would actually change anything. I'm quite happy where I am at the moment. That probably sounds quite sad. But ultimately, yeah, I think I think ultimately I'm quite happy. I'd like to change 2020 and start again, but ultimately, <laughs> that's not going to happen, is it? I don't think so. Not at this stage. <laughs> And your work in, in women's health sounds really exciting. How, how did that interest come about? It came about by accident, really. We saw a lady in um, in clinic and we sent her through for a, uh, just a routine smear. And she came back to clinic and said, oh, it's too painful. It was just absolutely impossible. Couldn't do anything. Um, so, she, you know, she just sort of like got off the couch and came away. So we then thought, well, actually, if she's suffering from these type of problems, then chances are there's a lot more women out there that are. And then we started to or I started to do a bit of sort of like digging around and speaking to people and found that there was a massive unmet need. And it's it's just escalated into something bigger than I ever anticipated it would be. Um, you know, initially it was just sort of talking to the ladies and seeing, you know, what what would their concerns were to actually setting up a women's health clinic, really. And what services do you refer to for men's health issues? I don't particularly see any of the men, um, you know, with um, sexual dysfunction. But that's mainly because our service, and again, this is one of the reasons that we set up the women's health, was our service is massively male do dominated. You know, the, the consultants are almost all male. And, and at least at the time when these problems were occurring, they were all um, male clinicians. So therefore, they tend to see them in clinic. But, you know, um, referrals to endocrine is no different. Referrals to the GP, um, obviously urology, if there's sexual um, or erectile dysfunction and things like that. So, yeah, it's it's about without doubt, always complementary therapy is always really quite useful. And we've got really good complementary therapists within the within the trust that we can quite easily refer to for advice. So those type of people really. Excellent. So you provide really holistic care from that perspective then, don't you? Yeah, we're, we're lucky. We're lucky that we've got, you know, really good links with them. And, um, you know, even in house for sort of like skin graft versus host disease. But, you know, I've worked alongside our complementary therapy, Jackie Stringer, who's very much part of EBMT. Um, and, you know, this is this is where this role has developed from, really. And can you offer three key messages to nurses who don't have the same experience as you do in talking about sexual health? I think, to be honest, I think it's, you know, nobody really has a lot of confidence or um, knowledge within sexual health until you actually start to, you know, learn more about it. Um, and I would say keep it simple. You know, we are all completely human, just what the basics is all that the patients are wanting they don't want scientific information just keep it simple simple advice that you can actually deliver to the patient um i would say keep it real again you know we're all human we've all got sort of like these these parts if you like these body parts and we've all got these sort of like needs so therefore just just be real and be realistic about it 
but similarly as well you know be professional um and i guess the third one um would be make it fun if possible you know and that's really weird it's you know it's not about sort of like a bit of a joke but it's about making it so that the patient feels comfortable talking to you because if you're quite stiff and uh you know trying to be very sort of like matter of fact then the patient doesn't necessarily want to engage so just keep it like you're talking to your mates really that's fantastic thank you very much angie thanks so much for your time today great to catch up with you thank you thank you michelle thanks Thank you.